This machine is cutting a taper because I think that the headstock is not in line with the bed. To measure that I have to turn a nice and beautiful shaft like this one. But for the moment it's not possible yet because the carriage is making a left and right movement, is twisting a bit while cutting. So we're gonna do something about this first. But also I found out that the center point has way too much wobble in it. It's not really wobbling, it's a bit play in the bearings. So let's start with that one. So this is the center point. I took it all apart, cleaned it up and I removed I think two tons and a half of uh, chips. I suppose that's why it made so special noises while turning. You heard it cracking. Now what I think is a nice feature in here is the split bearing and it's a little bit tapered. So this side is smaller and this diameter is smaller than this diameter. So if you put it in and you tight it, it's gonna reduce this diameter and the roller bearing that's in here is gonna be tightening up to take out the play. I think that's a really nice feature. A nice touch also I think is this ball bearing. This is a pressure bearing and if you turn it the other side it's marked here USSR. So that's a good idea maybe to greet all my Russia friends. I hope you are well. Let's put some toothpaste in it and do a bit of assembly. Maybe you can see but I use a piece of plastic. Of course I don't put my grease directly on my table. That feels good. What a mess. In here is a very tiny ball bearing. It's a bit challenge to put some grease in it. There is a clip that holds in place here in this little recess and this is the clip. I think that's gonna be the hardest part of the assembly to put this clip in place inside this hole. I assembled the life center again. I gave up on this little circlip because it was impossible to put it in place. I just gave up. So all I have to do now is put these two screws back in place to hold the system together. But first of course we're gonna see if we can get rid of this Play here. Gonna take a bit pressure off. So that's almost one tenth of play. So 
I suppose there's a special tool to do this, which of course I don't have. One hundredth of play. A little bit more. And under load. Yes, it turns freely. I think that was a nice upgrade. Now with the life center problem out of the way, I can concentrate on what's happening all over here, this place. So I'm gonna take it apart and see what we've got. There's a wall in the way. This is the saddle, of course, but it's the tools, uh, cross slide. And the cross slide feels really nice. There's only one thing, once in its life, it has to be mistreated, because you see here the score marks. When I take it off, it left a burr over here. So I'm gonna take it off. This is a very old file, completely worn. But for this kind of uh, work, it's ideal. You can feel it skate over the surface. So, this is finished. Let's give it a touch with a stone. With a stone. Yep, I turned it upside down. This side looks perfect, no problem. Here's a little bit of wear, but you can hardly feel it. So I'm not gonna play with this. I think it's good to go. This is just perfect. These balls are 12 mm in metric that doesn't exist. You only find this in old Toyotas. 12. Normally is 13. Oops, sorry.
I see that I make the things worse than it was before. I don't call this really a win. Before I had two hundreds of a millimeter and now five hundreds of a millimeter of side to side play. So there's still some work left to do. I think we're getting somewhere. I've been playing around with putting some small shims here below in this uh, hook system, I don't know how you call it, to keep the carriage down. There's uh, four of them and now we have not even one hundredth of play and the carriage is still moving really freely, feels really good. I have this beautiful bar here. First I'm gonna take a cut with the live center to see if this center point is still in line with the chuck which means that this diameter should be the same than this diameter in, in the middle of course. I put in here a bit of, a bit of high speed steel. I'm gonna cut at the lowest feed rate with coolant and see if I still have this lines pattern or not. Let's do. The finish is not terrible and here again I had these lines. All this part is good. This part is good and just here I have these lines. So I set my calibers here to zero. Go over here. I have a difference of seven hundreds for the Imperials, it's three thousand. And in the groove I go back to zero. I'm gonna cut this surface again with the shear tool and see what happens. With the carriage problem out of the way and I also realigned the tailstock because it was a bit out of so this bar I made between the chuck and the center point now there's a difference of one hundredth of a millimeter between these two distances for the Imperials a bit less than four tau I can live with that now I have to measure with my calipers and this should be a quality calipers but the feel is not really what it should be. I have here my old Mitu Toyo. This one is fantastic but I cannot read less than one twentieth of a millimeter. This one one hundredths. So my plan is now to bore this pipe out and then adapt a cylinder so I can feel, you know, feel is always better than measure. That's the idea. Always changing. I think that will do. Now that I finished this little part, I can start making the cylinder that goes in here. So I have here a piece of I don't know what steel, and it looks like a Bends are cut. Do you think I bought? Absolutely! Look at this! Brand new and it even works! Screw 
speed control. Let's do this. I'm installing the carriage stop. You never know if I do something stupid and cut in the jaws. It's maybe not a really good idea. Here I have exactly 28 millimeter. The other side of my part 27.9 that is one tenth of a millimeter difference in diameter one tenth of a millimeter is forty thousandths of an inch that's too much i marked in black the side that was your direction yeah this side was in the chuck if i measure this I have here it wants to twenty eight point zero three three thousandths of a millimeter over other side twenty eight point zero nine which means, I'm gonna stop this. It was like this in the late, yeah? This inside boring is smaller than the back side. My cylinder, this side is bigger than the back side. That's not logic. That doesn't make any sense to me. Normally, you should say the taper is, let me put this way, huh? the taper is that way, yeah? big here, small here, which means in my boring should be the same, but it isn't. Now, if I put it on here, this side, biggest side, oops, sorry. This side, the black mark, small side. This is no go. Yeah. Other side, almost a perfect fit, a bit too loose. And when I go further, it stops. I can feel with my finger inside here that there is a line, a difference in diameter. Want to feel? So, problem not slowed yet. We are now a few days later. All this uh, late fiddling around is uh, recorded uh, a few days ago because I had to go to the hospital for checkup, but everything went well so no worries i also received this week mail from australia that's uh, far from here from cam from the channel cam at battle and cam as you can see i already put your sticker on the cheap door and cam also include me a nice little note and for that i need my Glasses. He says, "Good day, Rusty. Another sticker for the cheap door. It's on it. Yeah, no problem. We all hoping you will open very soon. Very curious what to find. You are hiding in there. <laughs> mm -mm. Okay. He also says, I saw your N." 10 metric 10 taps were getting a bit behind their use by date. This is an M10 gun tap. Gun tap. They are great. 
let's have a look. A real Australian Ganta. Can I really appreciate this? I haven't bought new tabs, but now I don't need to buy any more. Let's put it to the test. This is a piece of uh, hot rolled steel. I drilled a hole in it, 8.5 mm. Of course, I wanted to do it in the drill press, via, uh, drill press, but this tap handle is too big. I'm gonna touch the column. So, we do it here. We're through. You right, Cam. These are great taps. Thank you very much. Of course, there's a link to Cam's channel in the description. I think I figured out what's wrong with this machine. It's not an alignment problem. It's the bearings. When I take this part, and I cannot bend it, I'm not strong enough for this. What is the indicator? One tenth of play. Of course, now it starts to make perfect sense. When I was cutting here the OD, the old part is pushing that way. So, of course, the cutting tool is making a straight line, so this part side is bigger than this side. Let's take it out, put the other one in. This one was much deeper in the chuck, <clears throat> so the difference is less. And of course the boring bar is pushing the part this way, yeah? So this side will be bigger than this side. I think that sounds logic. So I took the chuck off and the oil seal so I can see if there's any chips or whatever inside this uh, bearing. And I loosen it up. So now I have lots of play of course, but I have a much better feel without the oil seal. If you're a purist, don't look. I'm still getting Nowhere with this. The bearings are already over tightened. <coughs> of course, when I spin this part, I took it out, put it back in so it's not centered anymore. But still one tenth of play. When a chuck is mounted on the spindle, this inner bore here resists on this ring but it's not a perfect fit. There is a little bit of movement. So this ring is a little bit too big. What I think I'm gonna do is make a ring that pushes on this surface here and pushes on this surface over here. I have here a slice of uh, cultural steel Looks a bit like a hockey puck, I think. Let's see if I can make something useful out of this. My freshly made parting tool. Let's see how it performs.
we have a ring and beautiful chips. Let's see if it works. That fits, that's a good start. Now, ooh, this one. Yes. It feels like a quick stop, not this uh, sloppy uh, feeling. This is direct. Let's put a part in it and take a cut. I installed the same part again. Of course, now there's a little bit of wobble because it's not really centered. I'm gonna take a cut and after that, take measurements. So, huh, fingers crossed. Let's hope it works. Six hundredths of a millimeter, and that is uh, two and a half, no, two uh, thousands, yeah, two thou for the Imperials. It's a bit too much, I think, but I'm gonna learn to live with it. Well, that was lots of work just to find out that it only needs. A little ring but I had a good time making all this and doing all this and I hope you had a good time watching this <laughs>